is a capital personal income. So that is what they require. Identify the variable that has or has significant influence on fuel consumption. So that is what we call, that is what we call, Independence or significance, significance of independent variables, independent variables, and in testing this, we have the variable. And then we say what you require, you require to have T calculated and the appears is already given. You also require plus or minus T critical and it is given. And then you make your comment or your conclusion on your conclusion. And there are two independent variables, I think two or three. There are three, yeah? There are three. So there are three. Uh, three. So, Sasa, we have X1, we have X2 and XD. Oh, wait for here, I should have added, and uh, what? There was a third one I did not see, and population. With driving licenses. With driving licenses. That one I have not seen it. So there are three items. So the T values. The T calculated are two point zero three minus two point six eight is the your your we are the first one, eh? We are intercepts and we don't need that. So for the X1 is minus 2.68 and then minus 3.04 and 1.74. Uh, so they have not given us uh, the critical. Eh? So if it's not given, we will have to get it plus or minus t at 1 minus 0 0.01 out of 2, out of 2, n, n is the sample size. The sample size we are told is 44, so 44 minus 1. <coughs> so go to the t tables and uh, read.
So what have you gotten? Jemima is giving me 2.75. Okay, good. So 2.75. So root the apple seven plus or minus 2.75. Plus or minus 2.75. Plus or minus 2.75. So, Kasema, you check whether this one is within the range. B minus a positive. B go up. Is it inside or outside? Yeah? This is inside. Good. Have you see that now? Yes. So, if it is inside, that means it is what? In significant. Is inside. Uh, this one outside. So it is significant. This one is inside. Therefore, it is what? In significant. Is it significant? <coughs> so I think that is okay. Then the meanings we are told to tell the meanings. So the ID three seventy seven point two nine three seventy seven point two nine is the amount of fuel consumption is the amount of fuel consumption that is not affected, that is not affected by changes in fuel tax, changes in fuel tax, comma, Personal income, personal income, and proportion of population, and proportion of population with driving licenses, with driving licenses. Okay, uh, the next one is uh, minus that for, well, Mama, we just, you know the, uh, the negative side, and we shall capture it what, but you get 34.79, 34.79, that is the decrease 
is the decrease in fuel consumption in fuel consumption when fuel tax when fuel tax increases by one shilling when fuel tax increases by one shilling uh, the next one is 0 0.67 Zero point six seven is the decrease in fuel consumption. Is the decrease in fuel consumption when personal income increases? When personal income increases. By one shilling. By one shilling. Uh, the next one is three that six point four five. Three that six point four five is the increase. Is the increase in fuel consumption fuel consumption when proportion of population when proportion of population with driving licenses with driving licenses increases by one person. Increases by one person. Yeah, the hill I can see you say that you're not understanding. Uh, I hope you appreciate that you have not been in class for a long period of time. So that is the reason. Maybe you get an opportunity to look at the notes. Uh, it will help you. Now, when uh, we talk about the recreation analysis, I told you there are three types of relationships. One is positive, the other one is negative, and the other one is what? Now, nah. and positive, they move towards the same direction. That's all you can see. Where we have had the positive sign, I'm going to be at the word increase, increase. And where we have the word negative, we have used the word decrease and increase because they move towards opposite directions. So that was just to uh, quickly remind you of how to interpret those regression equations. Now we go to question number two. We can have Catherine read for us. Thank you, thank you, that's good. Uh, the question is on uh, confidence intervals. So question number two is on confidence interval. Now we have been saying that when you come across with uh, confidence intervals, there are three things that you need to establish. One is whether population is known or unknown. So is this population known or unknown? Uh, 
Uh, because he said most of you, you, you don't pronounce the first letters of the word, you just pronounce the last ones. Let me rephrase the question so that I get in a yes or no. <laughs> Is the, is the population known? No. no. <laughs> Good. Uh, because this data is uh, just for 10 accounts. Eh? It's not for the whole population. So, known, the same unknown. Eh? Unknown population. The data refers to a sample. The next thing is, uh, are we dealing with the mean, variance, or proportion? Is it about the mean, or the variance, or the proportion? It is the mean. You can even see there is the mention of the mean. Then, uh, is it one mean or two means? It's one, eh? Yeah, there's a sample of 10 items, so it is a sequel mean. So if it is sequel mean, if it is sequel mean, how do we get the confidence interval? The formula is x bar plus or minus t one minus alpha out of two, n minus 1, you multiply by s, which is divided by the root of n minus 1, <coughs> n minus 1. So x bar is supposed to be given as sum of x i is you divide by n. But I believe we still remember how to use the calc. Is that so? How to use the calc. So take your calc and you do that. Is ever you press what? Mode until you see regression. You press mode until you see regression. Then you press the number below regression. You see linear. And you press that number. We are there, eh? Yeah. But Kasema, what you do, uh, you press 6 M plus. 7 M plus. You press the number, then you press M plus. It is showing n is equal to huh? 20. Uh, so I think the typo had an error, but uh, that will not stop us. So, what to do, you see where they're saying a uh, random sample of 10, change that to 20. Change that to 20. Change that to 20. Uh, shift button number two. Uh, the mean is what? Five and five. So that is how you get the mean. Then for S, we say the formula is sum of xi minus x bar. You square this, you divide by n, you get the square root.
So shift button number two, and let's use the number two. Let's use the uh, second item. So press two and press equals. That will be the standard addition. What is the answer? Two point one seven. Two point six one seven. Okay. Two point six one seven. Remember, we have had or we dealt with several of these examples. So, in case you are not able to use the calc, you can use the formulas as written here. So, with that, now we proceed and say this is 5.5 plus or minus t 1 minus 0 0.05 out of 2 out of two, then 20 minus one, you multiply by 2.617, which is to be divided by the root of 20 minus one. 20 minus one. Uh, the value from the teachables, Jemima says is 2.69. Is that the one? Jemima, you are giving or you are giving this one? Okay. So we have used number two. Maybe you have used number three, that's why you are getting slightly right different. But either is acceptable, but the better one is number two. Shift button number two, then you press the second item, two equals. Uh -huh. From the T tables, read for me this one. Two point zero. Nine three zero. So times two point six one seven, which is divided by the root of nineteen. So this change is five point five plus or minus plus or minus. Give me these to two decimals. Give me this section out to two decimals. 1.26, 1.26, so the new, on the lower side you have, Four point two two four uh -huh. and on the upper side is six point seven six. So we are now in question number three. Question number three, we can have Carol in for us. Thank you. 
thank you, thank you, that's good. So that question is on uh, which area of sampling theory? Okay. I told you sampling theory has two areas. The first one is confidence interval, and the other one is who? If you don't remember, you can read what I'm writing. Okay. <laughs> Hypothesis test confidence interval and hypothesis test. And uh, as usual, is this population known? Is the population known? Yes or no? Eh? No, but the data needs to samples, eh? See and we are not told about the population. So the data, the, if the population is unknown, unknown population, so if it is a known population, are we dealing with mean, variance, or proportion? What are we told to compute? Now that one we judge from the question statement. The sentence that is at the, is the mean. Eh? Now is it one or two means that we are supposed to deal with? Two, good. So if there are two, we will talk of means, Difference means difference. And because the question has not given us these parameters, we will just come here and say using calculator x bar one. X bar one, I have set the calc again. Set the calc again. Mode regression linear. Uh, if you are there, we will start with the uh, A. So you press two A plus, we are entering the values of what is A. Two M plus, four M plus, 9 M plus, 3 M plus, and 2 M plus. You're through, eh? So shift button number 2, give me the mean, 4. I have then shift again, button number 2, uh, and press 2, so that you give me the standard deviation. Two points six one six one six one six one. Ah, yeah. Set the calc again so that we put the second set and N one. You are quasi how many items? Five. And one was five. I have set the calc again and uh, key in the values for B so that you tell me X bar 2, 5, S2, 1.91, and L2. Five. They are also five. Yeah, they are six. Yes, I have seen that. Do you remember the steps that we follow? 
hypothesis significant. Yeah? So we can summarize. It does give the the minimum required. We want step by step. Step by step. <laughs> okay. Uh, then in step number one, we have the hypothesis. Hypothesis. I told you x bar one is equal to x bar two. That is four is equal to five. So at this point, if you are not able to remember why you are saying how it why it should be like this, just cram it. X bar one equals x bar two. That would be good enough for the example. Then this other one. X bar one, we say you compare. You see, this one is smaller. So you say X bar one is less than X bar two. That is four is less than five. Four is less than five. Second step is significant. Significance level. So significance level we are told to do at one percent. Zero point one. That is ten percent. Zero point one. That is ninety percent confidence. Next step is where you bring test statistics. Test statistic and test statistic T. We say it is given as x bar one minus x bar two. All this you divide by the square root. Of n one minus one s one square plus n two minus one s two squared, you divide by n one plus n two minus two, multiply by one out of n one. One out of n two, and this is the square root. So you proceed and say t calculated is four minus five. Four minus five, which is divided by the square root of five minus one, 2.61 squared plus 6 minus 1, 1.91 squared. You divide by 5 plus 6 minus 2. Multiply by 1 out of 5 plus 1 out of 6.
Minus zero point seven three five. Agreed. Good. Mukwaza ni some What do you have? One point. Those who are online, you are also sending your figures. So make the conclusion and uh, interpret as we take a small break.
I told you to tell me. Okay. So what is the conclusion? Do we accept, do we reject?
Which one? This one is negative because we had said in the alternative we are on the lower side x bar one is less. So we are on the negative. When it's a negative, it's always negative. When you're on the lower side. How much the same is greater would have been positive. Uh, so are we accepting or rejecting? Yeah, good. We accept. We accept null hypothesis since T calculated is greater than T critical. That is minus 0 0.735 is greater than minus 1.8331. What does that mean? What does that mean? We have been told to check whether there is a, a difference in mean time. Now that we have accepted, it means there is no Good. There is no significant difference. There is no significant difference in the mean time. In the mean time. Taken using the two procedures taken using the two procedures. If that is okay. Next, Madoni, you can read for us. Question four now. Thank you, thank you, that's good. So you and I are in which area? Okay. Yeah, good. Is that for the six testing? Question? Is hypothesis testing? Is hypothesis testing? So, population noon or unknown? Noon. As long as you cannot see the standard deviation of the population, it is unknown. So, it is unknown population. Are we dealing with a mean or a variance or a proportion? Proportion, good. Proportion, remember the other word for proportion is 
percentage. Now, one or two. Two of them, good. So it's a case of proportions. Proportions difference. It's a case of proportions difference. So in the hypothesis, in the hypothesis, the null, I told you you can plan that this one is always like this. Sample proportion one is equal to sample proportion two. So the before campaign was 0 0.35. And after campaign, it was 0 0.4C, 40%. Oh. Jafika Kwaheto. So the alternative sample proportion one is greater than sample proportion. No, no, is less. That five is less than four. That is zero point three five is less than zero point four. It's less than. So if it is less than, we proceed to the next, which is called significance. Significance level. And this question has not mentioned to us the significance, but in the exam they will. Eh? Exam the week. Sorry that why I got it was not given. Uh, now, if it's not given, you simply assume, and when you assume you tell us that alpha to be 0 0.05. Okay. So that one is assumed. Uh, next is test statistics. Test statistic. So test statistic, we always use that anytime you are in proportion, whether population is known or unknown. Or we only the one proportion that must be said. That must be said. So this one is given as sample proportion one minus sample proportion two. This one you divide by the square root of sample proportion one, one minus sample proportion one, you divide by N one plus sample proportion two, one minus sample proportion two, you divide this by sample two. I have said calculated. Z calculated is 0 0.35 minus 0 0.40. Uh, 
you divide this by square root of zero point three five in the brackets one minus zero point three five. You divide by the first group and how many passes? Four hundred plus zero point four brackets one minus zero point four and the second group then four hundred also. Okay, four hundred. Mm -hmm. What do you have? Negative one point four. Huh? Yeah, that's you have a different one. Lima is giving me two points, negative 2.26. One point four? Oh, it's a different one. Okay, the Lima is a different one. One point four six. Okay. Because I'm so to solve the other company, you have a different one. You just copy that. Okay, for the purposes of our yes, Teresa, 1.46 good. So that is confirmed, and therefore we proceed to do the decision rule. The decision rule. So the decision rule will be here. Once again, because we are no assigned, eh? this one we are saying less. So that means here we are on this side shaping. And uh, here we will say significant. And if you find yourself here, you will say what? In Significant. Uh, this is very critical minus. And I told you to cram these values of Z. At for two tails, Z in a one point nine six. Good. Now one tail, one point six five. So I guess I need for your memory. Come on, you can. 1.65 or 1.64, but you normally use 1.65. 1.64, 1.64, 1.64, 1.64, 1.64, 1.64, 1.64, 1.64, 1.64, 1.64, 1.64, 1.64, 1.64, 1.64, 1.64, 1.64, 1.64, 1.64, 1.64, 
So what conclusion do we make? Are we accepting or rejecting? Do we accept or reject? Because I have used the word significant and it's significant. We will accept. See all this. See, the, the calculator is on this side, this side. Yes, and I have been telling you we accept relationships whose errors are insignificant. And you reject a relationship where the errors are what? Yes. So to accept is insignificant. To reject is? So here we will say, accept now, I call the sense. Since Z calculated is greater than Z critical, that is minus 1.46 is greater than minus 1.65. Minus 1.46 is greater than minus 1.65. And this is the language we have used in the past question. No, no, your question is because of significance. Yes. That's the language we have used. Yes. So, what is the meaning? If we are accepting, we are saying the first proportion is the same as the second proportion. That is what you are saying. And Whoever had told us to do the test was asking us to confirm whether there was a significant what? Increase in sales after the campaign. So you say the increase in sales. The increase in sales after the campaign. After the campaign was not significant. The increase in sales after the campaign was not significant. The increase in sales after the campaign was not significant. So I think we are okay with that. Now we can have other need for us. Question uh, five.
Thank you, thank you, that's good. I can stop at that point. Now that question is uh, from which area? Yeah, decision making. Decision making as question five. Is on the decision making. Decision making, because I'm awarded the first step. What is the first step of uh, decision making? Hmm? <laughs> ah, yeah. All right, give you time to check. Identify the objective. And see, you are producing the notes. Uh, if you have a battery the steps, quickly, then I come and ask you some questions. Give you several steps. So you have seen the steps, eh? So now that you have seen them, uh, 
I will not write them down again. The first step is to identify the objectives. No. So the objective here is to maximize profits. Uh, the, second of, uh, the second step is to identify the options, which we say they are also known as states of, rather they are known as alternative causes of action because they are within control. So in this question, what do you think are the options? The size of the branch to build them. Eh? Yeah, and also the issue of the sun. The issue of the sun. Then, uh, from there you identify what? The outcomes. And the outcomes are the issue of demand. They are calling them demand or what? It is demand. And then the type of the report. And then from there, there is, uh, you identify the type of the decision. And the type of the decision, this one is multiple because we have two options and also two types of outcomes. So you have all the practical, all what you are saying is right here. So we have two options. One is the branch size that we shall view still. Now here again is whether to do a survey or not, survey. I told you when you have two options, you have to decide or to know which one comes first. Do you first of all build and then go ask whether you should have built? Or you first of all go ask whether you should build and then build? Which one comes first? Survey or building? Survey. So uh, we either do a survey or no survey. Very happy. Very happy. Because this one is the one that I'm Because I'm Yes. 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 Now you have a to me and to me then uh, it is what you can write here. Yeah. And it is what we shall transfer to the fair work here. That's why I'm saying you either get it here or it. So we have agreed that we are beginning with what? With the SAP. When you do the SAP, uh, you either get uh, two types of reports. Eh? The report according to Given the outcome of the survey is to undertake uh -huh, or to abandon it, eh? you have to abandon the survey. But see, but see, or either to undertake or to abandon. Good. So here we undertake or we we abandon. Then we are told if it is to undertake, you build medium or large. Medium or large. And if you abandon, if the, 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 the project, you are told you abandon, see your money in Asia. Yeah. If you are told to abandon, you're in Asia. There's nothing else that you do. Then here, if you have not done a survey, again, you decide whether you build a medium or a large. Now, whichever one you build, there are two states of demand. You either get a high demand or a low demand. So, high demand or low demand. So with that now, you count how many takes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we are going to do a diagram that has nine takes. Nine tails.
So we learn now, we do our diagram. So we are aware, uh, actually now you go to the end of the page. You go to the end of your page. And then, first of all, we bring the formula. The formula for the payoffs. The payoff here, we'll have the payoff here. We have time in years. Time in years. And then we are given annual profit. Annual profit. So my annual profit, if this is A, now I'm not going to use A because the question has is, so that you don't confuse me. I'm going to take a, like E, Because I will still need the expected values, let me also avoid E so that we don't think it's the first letter. So I can use G, then I use H so that this will be G times H. So we are drawing from the end to do those three columns from the end of your page. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine.
So this is the position three. And remember, we say the everything is by design. So draw as per that design. I could have you know, this. Have you have drawn this one? You think up? It's a NSC. I could also have you know this. You know, two strings. Be fast, be fast so that within the next what? 15 minutes. So we can label this one here is where we say we do a survey. We do a survey. And that is what the question is describing as option C here. Yeah? Option C. Or we do not do a survey. 
So laws are vain. In most of the cases where there is a survey, there will be a cost. But this question has not mentioned the cost for the survey. When you do the survey, when you do the survey, we are told the outcomes will be to be told either to undertake or you'll be advised to do what? To abandon. You'll be told to undertake or to abandon. And the probability that you'll be told to undertake is 0 0.8, to abandon is 0 0.2. Obviously, when you abandon, you stop or everything comes to an end. And therefore, the probability of stopping there is one, because there is just one portion, uh, one outcome. But if you decide to undertake, we are told you can either build, large or medium. So we come here. We build large or medium plants. Large or medium. And the question says that the cost of building both plants and the estimated resultant profitability will not have changed substantially by the time of completion of the sub. The meaning of that is that the data we had been given earlier as, as uh, option A and B will still apply. Will still apply. That's the meaning of that. Because survey, survey is taking a, a whole one year. So do. For you to do A and B, those ones are pretty much. But option C is the one that is saying you do what? The survey, which is going to delay you for one year. Now, by the time you memorize a survey, the cost of building the brand will just be more or less the same. Exactly the same as the meaning of that statement. Uh, and then, however, the revised probabilities of a high or low would be. Now, I told you, every time you see survey, you should be able to revise probabilities using the Bayesian theorem. You'll be able to revise or ready to revise. But now here they have already revised for us. Where we are told demand will either be high or low. Demand will be high or low. And we are told the probability of being high is 0 0.9, low is 0 0.1. So I told you if the probabilities are already added to one, you don't need to revise. We already revise if we are not adding to one. And the easiest way of revising is adding the two probabilities you divide, or adding the probabilities you divide by the total. You divide by the total. And if you are wondering what I'm saying, <laughs> after this, you check there are two questions you solved, and I think. One of them is the divide probabilities. So you go check what I'm um, going to find. All right. Then, uh, we now go to where there is no survey. Where there is no survey, it is option A. Option A, it is the right branch. And building the right branch, now we are in option A. You build a large branch at a cost of six million. So we can put just uh, our figures in thousands. So put 6,000 here and put it in brackets that way as a cost of building that. And then we are told the resulting annual profit or loss if demand is high or low. So upper demand will be high or low. And if demand is high, the profit will be 2,500. And if it is low, you will make a loss of 500, so minus 500. And the probabilities are 
high is 0 0.2 and in a sum of 0 0.3, yeah? that should be 0 0.8. Rectify as a typo, it should be 0 0.8 so that they got one. 0 0.8. Uh, option B, we view the medium. So medium, medium, we are told it will cost at 3,500. So you put 3,500 there, brackets. And we are told if demand turns to be high here, we have high and low. If it is high, you will make a profit of 1,500. And if it is low, you will make a profit of 250. And the probabilities are 0.7. And 0 0.3. Yeah, I think to be recorded here. Except now, to do the happen. Now, the happen to report to me a few other costs here are the same as this one. Right? So, you need to manage up of the record, Sita. Now, I'll work at 500. 500. Then, how come to Korad and is high? It is 2500 minus 500. Then this is 1500. And this is 250. Obviously, when you abandon, it goes to zero. Eh? When you abandon, it is zero. We are pardon is zero. So we are told, according to additional information, the project is supposed to be five years. But here, where we have done a survey, the survey is taking us one full year. So we will be left with how many years to run? Four years. So here in four, this is four, this is four, this is four. Uh, this is also four, but these ones, they are five years. Those ones will be five years because there is no delay. You just like yourself, right? The fellows that you discuss with, the need to go back to school. And down the line, when it was time to come back to school, they immediately got to business or to employment or they're making money. But for you now that you chose to come back to school, you are delaying. They're already ahead of you. But to Kisha Marisa, surely, you now operate. So Mukipewa, the next five years, if you have been in school for three years, by the eighth year, so to Angalia Toto, Nanya Takua Nami. I wish I thank you, Nana. Sasa, you're ready. This now would fry, Takua Dapi. 10,000. He give me minus 2,000. He give me 6,000. Then 1,000. Zero. This is what? 10, uh, 12,000. 500. Then minus what? 25. This is uh, 7,000. 500, and this is 750, 750, yeah. 
So expected uh, monetary value. So you naandika hivi note and then expected monetary value. Expected monetary value. So you are writing down there note and expected monetary value. So one and a value for one. I don't know whether we pick it from there next time, Mama Marise. Marise. Zero point nine times ten thousand plus zero point one times minus two thousand. So we are doing for this one. When you check the lines going out, they are completed. So if they are complete, you both prime. And before you write the answer, if the line coming in has a cost, this one, you subtract. So you minus 6,000. It's 800. It's 2800. Okay. Where right. about number two? Number two, we do the same thing. 0 0.9 times 6,000 plus 0 0.1 times 1,000. But now you can see there is a cost that is coming in here. Minus that 500. Minus that 500. Two thousand. Two thousand. I am number three. Now you see number three, the lines going out are complete, are incomplete. If the lines going out are incomplete, you select. So we are going to take the higher, the higher EMV at one and two. One and two. So the higher is 2,800. The higher of those two. And here, Higher, you have to do one number one. So you come here and mark this one, this one. Where you have selected it, you mark that one. We have taken it from number one. Yes. Then we go to number four. Number four is a complete line. So it's simply one times zero, 1 0.0 times zero. And the answer is just zero. The answer is zero. We go to number five. Number five, the lines going out are complete. So it's a case of 0 0.8 multiplied by what we got in number three. Number three had uh, 2,800 plus 0 0.2 multiplied by what we got in number four. Number four had zero. Say equals. Hmm? 2240. Right. We go to number six. Number six, the lines going out, they are complete. So it's a case of 0 0.2 times uh, 12,500 plus 0 0.8 times minus 2,500 
But you can see there is a line that is coming in with the cost of 6,000. So you subtract the 6,000. You subtract the 6,000. Uh -huh. Minus five and fifty five and minus fifty five and rich. I am number seven. The rice going out are complete, so it's zero point seven times seventy five and rich plus zero point three times twelve fifty. Minus he calls in a year for that five hundred. That in seventy five positive. Eh? Okay. So we go to number eight. Is it agreed? Uh -huh. Which one twenty five? Ah, yeah. Uh, number eight, I'm saying you don't have to chapua because the rate is going out time complete. So it is the higher EMV. The higher EMV at six and seven. So six and seven, we take 21, 25. And that 21, 25 has been obtained from number seven. So we mark that way. And then number nine is also a case of selecting. It is the higher EMV, the higher EMV at five and eight. Five and eight. Five and one at 22, now we are going to 21. So we go for 22, 40. So you mark this one. So what do you advise? When you have marked that one, the advice is that we do survey, survey, and build what? Here to put my mark up at it was which one? That and build that. So I think we can call it a real answer. So we have answered part A and B. Part C, or you can leave it. This is the time mentioned. Then we pick up from there next time. So thank you.